The freaking Supreme Court strikes again. The breakdown starts what are you now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson. And we have a Supreme Court ruling decision. They're going to they're going to take up the freaking Trump immunity case. I mean, you know, just when you thought that it couldn't get any worse this year concerning Trump and the Supreme Court and the 91 counts. Now, here comes swoops in the Supreme Court. And they said they're going to take up the case. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail in a couple of minutes. But we've got a lot of stuff going on. It, it's been a busy week, as usual. By by Thursday, there's usually a million things that have gone on. And 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 it feels like it's been a month and a half since the last time we had a show, Listen, Rick. this is the longest week I think I've lived through in a long number of long weeks. And you've been on the road so across country, back and forth. You've been, you've been nonstop. Um, so I, I, I'll give a little extra energy to, to make up for it for you tonight, Rick, because I know you're tired. Um, I, I hosted three Brought hours. You by yeah. a gallon of Diet Coke. Well, there you go. Well, that's not any different than <laughs> not the other quite day, a gallon, but <laughs> there you go. that's every day for you. Um, I was up early. I'm not a morning person. I'm a night person, but I was up early today because I guest hosted this Michael Smirkana show on Sirius XM POTUS for three hours this morning, which right. is fun though. I always have a blast over it's there. It's a great it's, show. It's a fun it's show. such a fun show. And he's, he has a really, really smart audience. So yeah. it's fun interacting with the callers and stuff. And I had great yeah, they're, they're, they are They are very... Um... Up on the news. Yes, they're high, uh, high information voters. They are not low information voters, and that's right. and that makes for a better discussion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was cool. Um, but the all the news that broke just yesterday between uh, we brought up the the Scotus case. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, you had the no news about McConnell stepping down. Uh, we've got this Alabama IVF case that came down this week. We've got the Hunter Biden testimony. He finally testified behind closed doors yesterday. And just before we went on air tonight, the, the committee released the transcript, which has been quite interesting. We've got Super Tuesday coming up uh, next week. I mean, there's there's a lot there. There's a lot. Um, it, it, we, and, and, and it hardly bears mentioning that Donald Trump still underperformed again with another case of electile dysfunction in Michigan this week. Yes. Oh, that was this week. It felt like a month and a half ago. That was ago. this week. <laughs> that was two days ago. ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was that. There was some kind of primary in some state that I guess is kind of important. I mean, um, it, it, Biden had a physical this week. He's been, he, he was, he's fit as a fiddle, which I'm glad to hear. I mean, it's been a lot. And not only that, it was just a few days ago that freaking CPAC was going on. And um, Trump was on one the whole weekend. Oh. I mean, it was a disaster. Woo! So, of course, we've got to run the recap. Here it yeah, was we last recap, weekend sure, in 101 sure. seconds. Good grief. Hi, what's up? They're destroying our country and we're going to... I just wish we could do it quicker. I'd much rather see Biden as president. And I agree with him. I can't see too many people out there. I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones. Sidney Poitier, I thought he was very handsome, right? I'm being indicted for you, the black population. Lawyers are my best friend. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know that mugshot is number one. Elvis Presley is... Elvis Presley's number two. I'm a very proud Christian, actually. We're going to protect pro-God Context and content. Zion, Zionening, the dong, da dang. The voices of famed evangelical people and evangelists. He rambled. He's cognitively impaired. Three years lady, lady, lady. How about that? I talked to Putin a lot. And I'm not sure he looked great in a bathing suit. I think women like me. In Beverly Hills, you pay a fortune in taxes. They say you can only brush your teeth once a day. I don't think it could ever be wokenized. We're going to end this so-called 
Department of Education. We might have one desk, one person, just to make sure everyone's speaking English. They have languages that nobody in this country has ever heard of. Nobody can ramble like this. God is here and God is watching. And God probably can't believe what he's seeing. They rigged the presidential election, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Never get tired of that guy. Uh, the president mentioned in his speech the 2020 elections. Newsmax as a network believes the results were legal and final. Greta's coming up next. Stick around. Newsmax oh. as a network believes the results were legal and final. Yeah. I wonder. Mm. Well, I don't wonder. No. Never mind. Perhaps uh, they don't want to get sued like uh, Fox News and I don't could, think they're going to happen. I mean, right, you know, 787 million dollars. I mean, you got it's, Fox is still on the chopping block for Smartmatic. Yes. That's coming up. Yes. And, Which and is actually people, a bigger these, company than Dominion. I did not know that until oh, yes, recently. Oh, yes. They're they're a much bigger company. Huge. And and frankly, Frankly, the harm to Smartmatic was 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 real economic harm. Yes, Dominion was basically a startup, right? And and they blew up Smartmatic's entire business model. Correct, so, correct. So yeah, a little little legal disclaimer people gotta pay. there. <laughs> a little legal <laughs> disclaimer there. I, I'm telling you, I don't want to hear shit about Joe Biden. That was no. Donald Trump in three days. That was it. Three days of nonsense. And and folks. It, it, Donald Trump has been up again late at night on truth, um, just losing his mind, going ham on people mm -hmm. in the middle of the night. He is not, by the way, just so everybody knows, Donald Trump, Truth Social, is not going to pay him $4 billion. That is a fantasy. It's not happening. You have to explain and, that because I don't know that everybody knows what's yeah, happening. Yeah, a lot of people keep saying, oh, Trump can pay the $400 million. He's about to make $4 billion from Truth Social. First off, no. Second off, there's a process by which the acquisition and IPO would have to happen. That doesn't happen tomorrow or next week or next month. It could take ages. It could take years. And finally, what the IPO is priced at is based on EBITDA, okay? And folks, what that means is there's a metric that is used right. to calculate the value of a company value. based on its annual revenues. Mm -hmm. Well, last year, Truth Social brought in $3.9 million and spent 50. Y'all do the math. That's with an M, million, correct? Million, million, not, not billion. Not billion. So, That's and with that, an M. that metric can be 10 to 15 times in a good market. It's a decent market. Let's even say it's 10 times, just for round number math. That's not 4 billion, y'all. Not only it's that, not, it's just not going to be there. But didn't I just see that Trump's being sued by investors? Yeah, some <laughs> of the partners, he tried to illegally <laughs> dilute the that? value of their share because this guy cannot, it's like, you know that there was an article in National Review this morning, Tara, and it, and it was like, oh, his opponents are trying to put him in jail. Was that Rich Lowry? Yeah, the Rich I Lowry piece. I that out, and I, mean, I said Bill Buckley's I, spinning in his grave. But, yeah, I, I, I retweeted you on it because because it, it's, it's so true. This was a case where where you know Donald Trump has for years been unaccountable in any way for bank fraud, tax fraud, business fraud, breaking contracts with vendors by the. And I'm not exactly when I said this, folks, by the thousands mm -hmm. of small vendors who he screwed over for decades. And now he's being held to account. And the Pro National Review guys are out there like, with a tin cup, please give me a penny for Donald. He is starving. Yeah. Get out of here. It's insane. And But yet it's Donald crazy. Trump is the victim. I cannot. I just can't. I had a caller today um, on Sirius XM that tried to get on the case of, of the, uh, I had the authors who were on with us last week that wrote. Oh White yeah. Yeah. Rage. Right, yeah. Tom right. and, and Paul. Paul Walton, yeah. Walton, yeah. Yeah. And um, the guy was like, they wouldn't know anything about the life of a contractor or, or what it is, you know, to be a, a small business owner in, in, in white rural America and Donald Trump helped us and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I think that the hundreds of contractors that he screwed over in New York, New Jersey and elsewhere yep. would say otherwise. So yeah. You can believe that all you want, buddy. I, I love just, when I I love when I get those kind of kind of public It's like, oh, you're an elite. I'm like, listen, y'all. I I I I look. Do I come from some privilege? Absolutely, I do. But did I work on a shrimp boat? Yes, I did. Was I a roofer? Yes, I did. Was I a bike messenger in D.C.? Yes, I was. Have I busted my ass my whole life? Yes, I have. What mm -hmm. have I? Did I spend my summers driving combine harvesters and and dealing with hogs? 
soybeans, corn, cattle? Yes, I did. Y'all, Donald Trump <laughs> is a soft-handed mama's boy who lived in a golden palace. The, the guy's never touched a power tool in his life unless it was related to Melania. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't. That's wait, set up wait. took me a while to get there, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what he said. <laughs> oh my God. Well, maybe Donald maybe. bringing D cell batteries home. Oh God. Oh my God. It's starting already. It's not even 750. I'm punchy. <laughs> oh my God. Well, um, he forgot Melania's name, by the way, over the weekend. Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes or whomever, whatever her name is. Uh, and he actually felt the need to go on another one of his truth social rants to go off about how, oh, how dare anyone say that he, you know, forgot his wife's name and how ridiculous it is. Like, you just brought attention to it, you idiot. He also needed a piece of paper to remember one of his kids' names, which he forgot. I mean, like, just stop it. It's such Yeah, that was thing. Eric, though. It doesn't count. Yeah, that's right. I thought that was Tiffany. Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> so many three baby mamas and wives and kids. I don't. I don't know. Um, oh God. Which leads us to the Supreme Court and just the dismay that a lot of us felt yesterday when we found out that the Supreme Court decided that they would, in fact, hear the immunity case that has been ruled on by the appellate court unanimously, by the way, that said, no, you don't have blanket immunity. You're not a dictator or a king. But the Supreme Court said, no, no, hold our beer. We think we should review this. Well, why is this a bad thing? Because some would say, well, yeah, the Supreme Court should review this. It's an important issue. We need to make sure there's no ambiguity. We've got a lot of other states that are trying to disqualify Trump from the ballot. Right. So, you know, they've got that part of it, too. Um, you know, the, the, the ballot disqualification case, and now they have the immunity thing. So these are kind of important things. Here's the problem. The problem is that by them doing this, it is right. slowing down the schedule. So as long as the Supreme Court is still reviewing the immunity issue, it delays Jack Smith's ability to move forward with the case. That's correct. And this is exactly what Donald Trump wanted. In a way, this is granting him immunity in a de facto way, because the chances now of them actually having a trial before the election are almost slim to none. Now, yeah. could the Supreme Court fast track this? Well, yes, they can. I had our friend Harry Littman on with me on the radio this morning, and he was saying, yeah, I mean, the fact that they're going to review this by April 20th, the week of April 22nd, that's right. considered pretty fast for SCOTUS. But they could also do what they did in Bush v. Gore. They did that in three listen, days. I was around. I was around the, in 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 Bushland at that time, and yeah, I can tell too. you, they took that up in three days. Three days. Three days. That's right. You know, and look, I, I wrote about this this morning on my on my subset called in an article called "The Red Court Delays Justice," and and honestly, the thing that outrages me about this the most, Tara, is that this is a court that has clearly become politically sensitive yes. to the guy who put three of them on the bench. Yep. And, and, and those three folks on the bench and, and Alito and Thomas comprise an enormously powerful block mm -hmm. now. And John Roberts, who is not as much of uh, in that, in that camp, although he was appointed by W, he is in a position where, I think very troublingly, he's willing to let Thomas stay on this case, even though his wife has a direct impact and role in this case. It's outrageous. And and <clears throat> and I, I and and they gave Trump these two gifts, right? Yep. They gave him the gift of time, and they gave him the gift of comfort. Mm -hmm. The gift of comfort is is he's got more days in the clock to go out there and lie about this, and bring more pressure on this, and bring more pressure on the justices. Every single day that passes, they're going to ratchet up more and more and more and more and more. And like you said, the court leaves in the, their their last day of term, I think the 22nd of June. Yes. And guess what, folks? At they're that out point, October. At that point, without an emergency uh, hearing at some point, Merrick Garland will say, pick up the phone and go, Jack, listen, you it's did a good close. job. I know you yep. tried hard. Yeah. And he's the, def the nominee of the Republican Party now. Yep. Um, and this is excessively political because 
It took too long. Sorry. You know, maybe next time. And I, I just want to say this to our to our liberal and progressive friends. How y'all like Merrick Garland now? Because I used to get a lot of lectures about how unfair it was Merrick Garland didn't get on court. And maybe that was unfair at the time. But this guy is a slow rolling guy who does not understand that he's not going to be respected by upholding the the institutional pace right. of this. Right. Now's not the time to be, to be an institutionalist. It's, right. It's, he is going to be seen as the guy that gave Trump the the running room to get out of every bit of his legal jeopardy yeah. by ending the case. And if he I, does I, end yeah. the case, if he does end the case, I think America is going to be outraged. And they should be because the the, the American people are being deprived of the facts here and of the system adjudicating Donald Trump's misdeeds. You know, we've seen the polling that shows that for Republicans, there's a large swath of them that said that they wouldn't be comfortable voting for Trump if right. he was convicted. So for God's sakes, don't you think it's it's of, of national import that it's a, be, a bit of an emergency here to make sure that the American people have the opportunity to find out whether their next uh, president is a crook or not? According to the law, we know he's a crook. But this way, the system, you want people to have faith in the system, but yet right. you, you're slow walking this as if this isn't a, a five alarm fire for our democracy here. It is. Okay. And Anyone so who thinks that this isn't one of those issues where the court has an immediate and pendant need to look at the law and the constitutional implications of this is either a MAGA mm -hmm. or a fool. Correct. And I also want to remind people, since you brought up Clarence Thomas, um, the fact that Clarence Thomas is not recusing himself is another example of where institutionalism and the uh, guardrails of of the gentlemanly, you know, respect for one another and and ethics is out the freaking window now. You cannot rely on this anymore, unfortunately. And we put out last year uh, something called compromised, and it still applies. Freaking Clarence Thomas, sure well, does. Justice Clarence Thomas is compromised. On January 19th, 2022, Thomas was the only Supreme Court justice willing to help Trump and his allies hide from justice over the January 6th insurrection. Thomas did not hide that he was willing to grant Trump's request for secrecy, but it wasn't just to protect Trump and his conspirators. It was to protect his wife, Ginny Thomas. A radical right-wing activist, Ginny Thomas has openly applauded rebellion in the past. I think people are rebelling and there's a big tidal wave coming. I think the Democrats are pretty worried about what's coming. And the lead up to January 6th was no different. Ginny Thomas used her direct line to Trump's White House to push for the overturning of a free and fair election even attending the rally that would ultimately end in an attack on the U.S. Capitol. None of this would be known if Justice Thomas had gotten his way. The January 6th Commission can't do their job if one of the most powerful men in the country is using his seat to protect his best friend. Clarence Thomas must recuse himself because he took an oath to protect the Constitution not his wife. So good. Still applies. Still, Still applies. Still a hot ad. Yeah, so good. Um, yeah, uh, but we're stuck with him because the Supreme Court polices itself. There has been no ethics reform and the Chief Justice can't force him to recuse himself because people assumed that the Supreme Court justices had integrity and that they would know better but you know, uh once again you know, the, 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 court era of Trump always, the, the court was always going to be the smallest branch mm -hmm. obviously it was always going to be the branch that depended the most on a public perception of of trustworthiness and, and probity and, and trustworthiness mm -hmm. and discretion and 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 honor yes and and look clarence thomas has become this kind of maga world figure now and I think he, at some point, decided he enjoys being this middle finger. Yes. Um, you know, so what if I'm on private jets with with people who have cases before the court? So what if I'm on their yacht? That's right. So what if they bought me an RV? So what if Harlan Crow bought my mom's house? Yeah. 
you know, so what if they forgave the, my loans? And so what if I, right, because if anyone has ever has time to listen to the uh, the podcast that was done by it, um, Michelle, I know you're going to Google it for me. I forgot the name of it. We listened to it on our drive to Florida last year. Um, the the seven part series, uh, Slow Burn. Thank you. Slow Burn. Um, it, 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 it really put Clarence Thomas in context for me. And as someone who used to back in the day think, oh, that Clarence Thomas was being victimized and all of that because, you know, the, the other side didn't like he was a, he was a black conservative, blah, right. blah, blah. I had no idea. OK, what a bitter bastard this guy actually is. And all of this, it's, he's been waiting 30 freaking years to finally give the middle finger to all of those people and mm -hmm. do whatever the hell he wants. And that's what's happening right now, because he knows that there is no recourse. There's no recourse. Right. I heard There's Dan no Goldman, the congressman, Dan Goldman, the other night was talking about, uh, you know, possibly impeachment proceedings for Clarence Thomas if 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 Democrats take over the House and the Senate. And I was like, I don't think we should go that far. I, I mean, whether it, I worry about politicizing that too much. But I think they do need to take up some type of ethics reform or term limits for Supreme Court justice, something, because this is only going to get worse. It's not going to get know, better. And again. John Roberts is a guy who who has clearly signaled on a few things. He's worried about the way the court is perceived. Yes, um, and, and I think that this that this delay is going to set back any kind of of hope that Roberts had to improve the image of the court really meaningfully. Because this there there is no one in America left or right who doesn't think this was political. Because yeah. on the right, you see this triumphalism, like ha ha. You lose again, liberals. Yeah. But look, folks, I've said this for a while. Tara and I have both talked about this on the show and elsewhere. No one else is coming to save you. Mm -hmm. There is no cavalry coming over the hill. There's no magical court case that's going to put Trump in jail. And if you were gambling the future of the country on legal maneuvering on one hand or the very hard work of going out, registering people to vote, turning people out, doing the campaign, doing the lift, getting to work every single day. Yep. You have eight months ahead of us, folks. Every single day has to be maximized at the effort to defeat them at the ballot box. There are no cheat codes. There are no shortcuts. There are no special secret handshakes that make him walk off the stage. If there had been one at any point, believe you me, nothing would have stopped me from finding a way to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, but We have to beat him. We have to beat him hard. We have to beat him so badly. We have to have such a number in the Electoral College. It's too big for even those whiny babies to say that they were cheated. Democracy does not defend itself. Nope. It requires an active citizenry and an informed one to make a decision that they want that democracy to continue. And uh, we put out an ad this week on Monday called Heroes that really emphasizes that point. Take a look. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on Earth. When freedom is in danger, Americans always rise to the challenge. Doing the hard thing, the right thing, which are often the same thing. Eight generations of Americans have fought for the freedoms we have today. History called, they answered. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. In 2024, the fight for freedom is different. It isn't in a foreign land on some distant battlefield. This year, it's at the ballot box. And this time, the hero is you. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or to a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Indeed. Uh, some good news on the legal front, though. <laughs> Trump has to pay all that money and he doesn't have it in New York. No nope. judgment against him. He's been trying to get a stay and say, you know, well, what if I just put up $100 million? And the judge said, if you know, no, it's going to be the whole thing. And uh, you need to put up the whole thing. So and if you don't have the liquidity to do it, then you're going to have to either sell some buildings or they're going to put a lien on things. Just like when you put up, when you post bail. And, and let me tell you, if I were Letitia James, <laughs> I would be very, very alert 
There have been a lot of stories now that Trump is trying to move his assets to Florida, mm -hmm. to get them out of the reach of the mm -hmm. New York courts. Florida's bankruptcy laws are much different than New yes. York's, and they, they, they would advantage him uh, in a lot of ways. But I, and I will say this, Tara. You've got a guy who is a financial flight risk, if that makes sense. Yes, of course. He can't ever escape, but but he'll try to sho shovel his assets out into different uh, uh, investment vehicles, etc. And it can't be allowed. In fact, if I were the if I were the attorney general, given that risk, I would start putting those buildings on the market. And if 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 Donald Trump she's wants talking to, about it wants to sell them for fair market value right now. They will not be the fantasy values in his head. Correct. Mar-a-Lago is not worth a billion dollars. No. Mar-a-Lago is not worth a hundred million dollars. No. The property appraiser says it's worth about twenty-five million dollars, which means on the market in Palm Beach it probably goes for about sixty. Mm -hmm. Trump Tower is not worth four billion dollars. No, he listed at one hundred and sixty million. Which yeah, I it's one hundred sixty million. And it's a, it's a, no, but Tara, it's an old building. It was yeah, I guess so. 80, I just, or late 80s, or late 70s, early yeah, 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's apartments that go for that now <laughs> for like $100 million. There's a $200 million I... apartment, apartment, not building, apartment down the street. Now it has not sold, um, yeah. but it ain't cheap. Right. So I was like, huh, but still the point is that he has assets that he could sell off to pay this and Letitia James does have the ability to enforce this judgment. I want to see I want to see them seize that airplane. Oh my god. I want to see them seize the airplane and I want to see them taking the crowbar and and taking the the Trump letters off of Trump Tower. I think it, he'll it, I think he might like have the heart attack right there. He might he might he might drop dead right there. <laughs> but look, uh, I mean and I I I you know, all kidding aside. Yeah. Trump Tower he is deeply obsessed with his ownership of Trump Tower. Correct. And and that is one of the things that is definitional to the very core mm -hmm. of his brand. Yep. And if he loses Trump Tower, oh. Ooh, oh. I just want I think we're in a around. full meltdown. I just want a camera around the day it happens. I really do. Oh, yes. Please, please let it happen. Please let her take Trump Tower. Please for please, because that would be the ultimate, the ultimate price um for him in this respect, other than going to jail, in my opinion. Um, but because oh, yeah. yeah, I mean you re put you so you re put yourself. Um, speaking of the courts, another big ruling this week came out of Alabama. The Alabama Supreme Court decided that um, embryos, frozen embryos, are children and disrupted IVF treatments for the most part, making it a criminal act to destroy embryos that aren't used. This has to be one of the stupidest things ever, and it's also political poison, political kryptonite for Republicans, because you combine the abortion, lack of abortion access, and what's happening there with women's reproductive rights now with this. IVF has like 85% support across the board. You can't more, get Americans more. to, to agree mean, on 85% of anything, of anything. Anything. But they agree on this, that IVF is a good thing and that couple should have access to it. Why? Because infertility does not know partisanship. Millions Correct. of women, millions of families, millions of couples suffer from infertility in this country and have had the blessing of getting a child, having a child thanks to IVF and that technology, including several Republicans like Nikki Haley. <laughs> you mean, know, Tara, we've talked about this a lot. I want to look back Lord. on one thing real quick. I just texted a friend of mine. I said, what's the, what's his 757 worth? He shot back a, uh, a message that said 12 to 15. Oh, that's it for the that's nothing. It's chump change. <laughs> that's like ten days of interest. Okay, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so, but but to to go on the IVF thing, which is a very serious matter. Yes. Um, we've talked a lot about how in America there was this long, uncomfortable compromise after Roe versus Wade, where nobody thought the nobody loved Roe versus Wade. The pro-choice side thought it was not enough. The pro-life side thought it was too much. And America sort of learned to manage it, and 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 you know Bill Clinton once said abortion should be safe, safe legal, legal, and rare. And George H. W. Bush said, "I will all you know I'm pro life, but I will protect women in cases of rape, incest, and the life of the mother, and I will never seek to ban abortion under those circumstances." Those two presidents weirdly got to this like 
sweet spot, the, the right balance point in, in American society. Mm -hmm. And the side that overshot here um, with Dobbs, the Republicans told Democrats what they were going to do for 40 years. Yep. They did it. And the shock of it surprised more than anyone, the Republicans. Yes. And the, the dog caught the proverbial car. Correct. Mm, this bumper tastes good. I'm going to let the car drag me down the road for a while. <laughs> yeah. And the problem that we have now for the Republican Party is that may that was too much for the political class, but it was only an opening bid for the crazies. Mm -hmm. We've seen in the states the six-week abortion bans. That's why you've seen in states like Missouri banning pregnant women from getting a divorce, which is That's insane. In states with with the, the wanting to monitor women's fertility cycles by getting the data from apps on their phones. It's, it's, Make sure those hussies aren't out there having having abortions. Um, all of that was terrible. Okay, that was a, a a gigantic piece of political kryptonite. It was radioactive waste, and now the IVF decision. And the fact that the United States Senate this week, in their infinite stupidity, <laughs> blocked a bill yeah. to protect the rights of women to receive IVF and fertility treatments. And it was a woman who did it. it was the stupid senator from Mississippi. Nemo <laughs> Smith down there. Oh, okay. God, the, the one that that uh, thought that there should be public lynchings or or right. whatever. She she's is at. she is not the brightest person in the room. And is one of the most vicious. So you've got this 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 procedure that is given couples a shot at children and family that they would not have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. And the cruelty, and the madness, and the and the viciousness of these people to deny these. The, it puts the lie to the pro life argument at a fundamental level. Right, these they people are not pro life. They can't they have are it both anti -family. ways. Anti family. Right, they can't have it both ways. They don't want you to have an abortion because they, they want to protect life, but then they right. they want to stop people from a procedure that helps produce life. Which is it, you freaking idiots? Make a decision because you know yeah. what? It's actually not about that. It's not about the science. It's not yeah. about what's in the best interest of women or families. It's about controlling. It's about controlling right. women. It's about uh, sending women back a hundred years to the Puritan days where the women knew their place. And that comes from right. the, 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 the Christian nationalists, the, the right wingers that are, that are overtaking the Republican party that are enmeshed in this MAGA movement. And they cannot stand independent, smart women making their own decisions that they're threatened by strong women. They don't like that. They want to send us back to the, to the dark ages. And but it's also, it, it, it is, it is so much about that Tara. but it is also about, um, it is also about, uh, fathers because you know what the message fathers are getting right now is that if they can't have a child, if, if for some reason they can't do it because couples are the ones IVF is a journey for, for in most cases with, with, with couples who desperately want children. Of course. If you don't think these that these guys are going to be just livid at the cruelty of this to their to the to the, the their their potential family well, and to their wives, I, I would everybody hope so. is going to hate this, and they deserve every. I almost said a bad word, but we're on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to not do that anymore. Um, but the, the cruelty of this is so intense. The the horror of their the decision on this is so dramatic that the NRSC sent out a memo to yeah, all yeah. the senators. Yeah. Say you're for IVF. Say right. you're for IVF. Say you're for expanding it. Then they voted against it. Yeah. yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I know. The it's... lie has been exposed. And Look. even, even Donald Trump, who is not a bright man or an educated <laughs> man, but occasionally he's a cunning man. Yes. He came out and said, oh, no, I'm not. I'm in favor of IVF. IVF is good. Well, yeah, because it also is something that privileged, you know, it's for a lot of privileged people with money sure. because it's very expensive. Um, even though a lot of states now are starting to uh, uh, legislate uh, coverage, insurance coverage right. for it. But still, right. it's not it's not uh, mandatory in a lot of places. But some states, it, it you know, you can provide for it, which is good uh, because infertility is such a problem. But it like. They're morons. And I hear you about that it impacts men too. And I hope that there are men that are upset about this, just like the Dobbs dads that we talk about right. in our Bannon line, where it impacts them. They're upset about their daughters not having the same rights as their grandmothers. 
Um, but it really is overwhelmingly, in my opinion, oh, no, about no, 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 no question. I just want to make sure people. that people understand this is an equal opportunity offense. This yes. is this is so unbelievably horrifying. And and look. I know they don't want science in the world. I know they don't believe in it. I know they don't like it. I don't. I know they don't like doctors and medicine and experts and all that other stuff. God forbid. There are millions of Americans alive today. There are millions of children in this Eight world million. alive today. Eight million, is it? Mm -hmm. Right, give or take. Yes. Because no matter what else that those families tried didn't work, and IVF did. So many, I think there are a lot of us who have friends or family members who have successfully gone through IVF. One of my sure. best friends, they 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 have their kids because of IVF. You know, I mean, it's like every, it, it touches a lot of families. So this is pretty stupid. Yeah. Um, and not only that, when you have people like Senator Tommy Tuberville, who talk about stupid, what a jackass this guy is. He doesn't even know what IVF is. When he was asked about this, is his home state. He's the senator from Alabama. This was his response. Do you have a reaction to the Alabama Supreme Court ruling on the fact that embryos are children? Yeah, I was all for it. Uh, you know, you just got to look at everything going on in the country. It's a, just attack on families, attack on kids. You know, anything that we can do for the future of our young people because they're our number one commodity. We need to have more kids. We need to have an opportunity to do that. And this, I thought this was the right thing to do. But IVF is used to have more children. And right now, IVF services are paused at some of the clinics in Alabama. Aren't you concerned that this could impact people who are trying to have kids? Well, that's for, that's for another conversation. I think the big thing is right now you protect, you go back to the situation and, and try to work it out to where it's best for everybody. I mean, it, it, that's, what, that's what the whole abortion issue is about. So but this really isn't about abortion. It's about no, no, I, no. IVF and the concern that now but families it, might not have access to it. But it's about the same direction. But I agree. But people need to have access. People need to have We need more kids. We need the people to, to have the opportunity to have kids. You know, I'd have to look at the entire bill of how it's written. I have not seen it. Supreme Court decision. Well, I know that. But I'd have to look. At, I haven't looked at it. But this is state issue. Women aren't going to be able to have IVF treatments already in some places. Yeah. That's unfortunate. What do you say to them? Unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunate. Alienate some voters in general election? I don't know. It might some, but you, you know, you don't hear a lot of talk about it. I mean, you, you don't. That that's not a big conversation. Well, it's a conversation now, and and IVF IVF is not a Democrat or Republican issue. Agreed. Families across it's the board it. use it. What, what do you? What is your message to the Supreme Court if this does in fact stop families from being able to use IVF? Well, we don't need that. Alabama, please do better. Do better. Well, here's the other problem for Alabama. Tommy Tuberville does not have a home, apartment, or property in Alabama. Right, he, he lives is in a Florida, Florida resident. <laughs> he lives in Florida. Which should tell you a lot. Well, like I said, as a Florida Alabama, I, they're the good and decent people of Alabama. You guys, come on, get it together. You can't have jackasses like this representing you. Because you well, get, and, I mean, and, and this and, is and, embarrassing. You know, just, does Tommy Tuberville know where babies come from? <laughs> I don't think he does. Apparently not. Yeah, my family, the stork, brought it down the chimney. <laughs> um, I think maybe this type of idiocy and this type of just unserious legislating is probably why Mitch McConnell is just like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> Mitch McConnell this week said, I'm out. I'm stepping down from leadership. I'm going to serve out my term. No, he's not, folks. Okay, no, but he's, he's saying November. that now. He's out. He's out the day after election day. Uh, yes, and you know he's 82 years old. We've seen that he's had some health, some health issues. So I'm sure that contributed to it. But the idea that he he he's going to continue as leader of the Republicans in the Senate uh, when you've got idiots like Tuberville and others, these are who people are electing. He's he, his time is over. His time is past now. Um, Mitch McConnell will have a checkered legacy. He is the longest serving leader in the Senate. Um, if you're on the, the, you know, the Republican side, you think he was fantastic. He pushed through three Supreme Court justices. He denied Barack Obama a Supreme Court justice. He pushed through a hell of a lot of federal court lifetime appointments on the federal court under Trump. Yeah. Um, he, there is really no better Senate tactician in recent political times than Mitch McConnell. That's None. just purely from a political side, however yep. you feel about the, the policies. But 
And Mitch McConnell was able to keep that caucus together. I mean, he ruled with an iron fist. He was respected until he started to buck Trump. And yep. then you have the the Josh Hollies and the Ted Cruz's and uh, the Tubervilles and these idiots. They are now gaining more power and they're more vocal and they don't oh, respect yeah. they don't respect a McConnell anymore. Um, and because he's not sufficiently MAGA, he was never really a MAGA guy. He was it was a pure political calculation for him to go along with Donald Trump. And I earlier this week on MSNBC, we heard that there was reports that there were uh, negotiations behind the scenes for. Uh, uh, McConnell to possibly endorse Donald Trump. And I said to myself, what? And I went on MSNBC and said that Mitch McConnell is a freaking coward. If he actually goes through with endorsing Donald Trump after everything that not only has Trump personally done to Mitch McConnell and the insults to his wife and the ethnic slurs and calling McConnell names, McConnell knows what Trump did on January 6th. He said so on the Senate floor in the speech of his lifetime and yeah. then turned around two weeks later and acquitted Donald Trump in the impeachment hearing. They, Mitch McConnell could have stopped Donald Trump. We would not be here right now if he had, st had taken a stand and done the right thing back right. after January 6th because he could, have, he could have whipped up enough Republican votes to freaking convict Donald Trump after January 6th. But because he didn't, those senators didn't have a permission structure to vote to vote to convict. And here we are today with the scourge right. of Donald Trump still barreling down to a possible second term and destroying our democracy. So Look F it. you, Mitch McConnell. I really don't care about your legacy and other things. This will be your legacy if Donald Trump is reelected and you actually endorse him. That, that's that's really the problem that McConnell, the some of the people around McConnell were the most grotesque DC kind of opportunists. We know them. And they said. Two things. Before January 6th, they said, what's the harm in humoring him? Right. Thinking and, and, and naively. And before they could. January 6th, one of them said, who, a guy named Josh Holmes, who is now trying to reposition himself into Trump world. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the leak of the story about Mitch McConnell negotiating with Trump was leaked hey, from, by Josh Holmes. Absolutely. As soon as 100%. I saw that, I knew. I was like, oh, this is freaking Josh Holmes 100%. Doing this. It's yeah. like, oh, Las Vegas meeting with with senior McConnell strategists. Come on, dude. They're Cover buddies. Your They're Cover buddies. Your prints a little better, right? But but here's the thing, Tara. The key quote was Josh Holmes said, "If we can get MAGA's voters, we will build a permanent governing coalition." Now they kept that in their minds, and it it invaded their brains so that after the terrorist attack on the Capitol. They still thought we could get something good out of this. We can still get Trump's voters. We can't alienate Trump. It's nuts. This is and why people it, hate politics. He may not have flown down to Mar-a-Lago like Mitch, like uh, like Kevin, Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy did, but he still bent the knee. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, Mitch McConnell was the greatest tactical maneuvering behind the scenes guy since LBJ. Yes. And, and you know who told me that? Harry Reid. Right. Who respected McConnell's in fighting behind the scenes ability. Look, guys, if 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 Chuck Schumer had a tenth of of, of Mitch McConnell's mojo in that world, right, he would be able to do things when he was in the minority that Mitch could do. In the, Mitch could get more done in the minority than Mitch Schumer can in the majority. Unfortunately, he knew how to play the inside game. Mm -hmm. And and the problem is he never understood that once you get in bed with Donald Trump and once you get in bed with Trumpism and once you get in bed with MAGA, they will eat you alive. You either become them or they devour you. That's correct. And he's trying to get out of there with a shred of dignity. And I don't think they're going to let him have it. I don't either. They, it started already. I mean, the, the sharks smell blood in the water. Um, Josh Hawley could, couldn't even give McConnell any respect whatsoever, saying, well, he should step aside now. And but like, Okay. Um, We've got this race now for who's going to replace him. No one's replacing him before the end of the year unless something uh, health-wise happens to McConnell. Right. But you've got the three Johns. You've got John Barrasso, John Thune, and John Cornyn, who are the Thune's the too much three. of a normie. Yeah. Cornyn is impure in their eyes. It's going to be Barrasso. Uh, well, it's it unless... No, so Trump wants Steve Daines. He was putting that oh, word out today. And, yeah, and, and But here's the thing. Daines is not... A leader. No, he's, he's a he's a he's a, a kind of a weak figure. 
but he sucks up to Trump. But um, so does Barrasso, and Barras. I think that Barrasso has made an effort, and and the, Barrasso's the got a yeah. I think Barrasso has the inside has track the in the in the Senate right now because the he other knows what outside... he's doing. You you can't just you can't do like a Mike Johnson situation for Senate leader. Like no, you can't no, throw in no. someone that doesn't understand the Byzantine rules and the political brinkmanship to run the Senate. It's a whole different skill set than it is over in the House. So I don't think Steve Daines has it. I don't know that the other senators would vote for him um, because I don't think. I think here's, the here's the other two outside plays. Um, there is some muttering I picked up today uh, about Mike Lee, who's now uh, saying possible. I would consider doing it so we could have a MAGA Senate. Blah Good blah God. blah. I mean, there's a guy with the charisma of a of a doorknob, of a tossed out mannequin in a in a <laughs> in a in a, in a dump somewhere. <laughs> Just a creepy, weird bro. He is um, the other person who wants it. I don't think he could get it because I don't know if we've got uh, if 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 we accept aliens of his particular planetary species as leaders is Rick Scott. Rick Scott, yeah. Yeah. He wants it so badly, but he really screwed it up as um, as NRSC chair. Yeah, a couple he can years forget ago. it. They're not gonna. He's not likable. He screwed things up, and I don't see him. Who's listening to him? He can't. He can't govern a coalition. No. So no. I mean, he can try and put his name in. in I mean, in but the here's ring, the but... thing: Rick Scott. Rick Scott has so much money. Well, that's true. Um, that he has influenced that. a lot of people with that over a lot of different things. But There's my that. goodness. And how he got that money is a little And Rick Scott, story. by the way, as, as a great commenter pointed out a minute ago, Rick Scott, who is a epic thief of Medicare money in his yep. personal career, yep. um, wants to eliminate Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. So if he wants to make a big show about running, I welcome it. Yes. Please do. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. And I have to say about John Thune, um, I was disappointed to see that he endorsed Trump last weekend because, like you said, he really wasn't a MAGA guy. He's a pragmatist. And, you know, he's a, he's a decent senator. He's been around a while. I actually like John Thune. I thought he was an, a nice guy. I mean, obviously, the era of Trump has kind of made them all a bunch of wusses. But, um, but when I saw that, I was like, what? But now it makes sense because he was trying to position himself knowing that McConnell was getting ready to step down. And they've all been in leadership. So Barrasso, right. Thune, Cornyn, so they understand how things work. Uh, it'll be, we'll see, but the knives are out. The knives oh, yeah. are out. And uh, we'll, we'll this see. Is not gonna, this is not going to be a smooth descent for anybody. No, it's not. And uh, I'll be curious. I mean, there's really no reason at this point for McConnell to actually go through with endorsing Trump. <laughs> there's no reason. He's going to, he's stepping down. But but here's the thing. He will, though. He anyway. will. He will he anyway. Will. I know he will. It's almost like these people love to cut off their lines of retreat back to a per position of dignity and, and sanity. <laughs> they can't help it. It's a, it, you know, it cognitive dissonance is a hell of a drug. I will. I, I wish I could fit that on a cap because that's somebody mentioned, somebody mentioned Grassley. He's tan <laughs> rested and only a, a thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fossil that Grassley. <laughs> Oh my God. One of my really good friends when I worked in Capitol Hill worked for Grassley. He's from Iowa. And oh my God, the stories they used to tell us about, about Grassley are hysterical. He's, I he's, no, he's something I, I else. I have no doubt. He's something else. Anyway, talk about something else because we have to talk about this. Um, is this nonsense on the Hill? We talked about the Senate. Let's go back over to the House side. The Hunter Biden hearing yesterday was just, again, another shit show of of just a series of comedic errors by the Republicans. They got him to testify behind closed doors and they released a transcript just before we came on air. I haven't had a chance to go I through it yet. I haven't read it yet, but no, I heard um, it was out. But I, I saw a couple of the, uh, of the highlights that they were talking about right before we went on air. And basically, I'm, I'm glad to hear this. You know, Hunter came in swinging because he actually yeah. has the facts on his side and Republicans do not. We know what an absolute shit show this has been. This whole Biden impeachment, Biden crime family has been a made up political um, thing for Republicans to from use. From the get go. To, from the beginning. OK, that's right. Just to deflect from the fact that it's actually the Donald Trump crime family. We all know this. It's projection 101. But um, they was not only did Hunter Biden just school them all and say, like, dare them. Show me the evidence that my father was involved in any of my businesses. He was not. We know what happened uh, in the last two weeks. That the 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 big uh, witness was arrested by the FBI and getting Russian intelligence 
false Russian intelligence. The guy was a freaking double agent. <laughs> it blows me away that the center of their of their investigation, the guy they were pitching so as solid gold, totally reliable for two years. Yes. And Made by the way, up. he's a, he's a Russian knew. op. A Russian they op. knew about this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> you know, Comer, who reminds me of the great piece of classical um, restoration era English poetry, some folk will never lose a toe, but then again, some folk will. He's Cletus the slack John yokel. And by that, <laughs> I mean the Simpsons. Um, Comer, I, I, how does that guy not drown in his own drool? How does he actually function to put clothes? Did they like lay them out like garanimals for him in the morning? Because <laughs> he's clearly one of the stupidest human beings to yes. ever hold elected office. Yes. And that's a high bar. Correct. I, and he just makes himself look dumber and dumber every time he opens his mouth trying to defend this. Try, and I have to say, I want to give credit to Barra Sanchez and Ryan Nobles. Uh, use, Ryan used to be at CNN. He's over at NBC now. And yep. Boris now is, he used to be out in the field and now he's an anchor. They pushed back really hard on these yes, Republicans. Boris, Boris took him to school. Took him out. I think it was Burchette from, from uh, Tennessee. Right, right, right. Oh, you're right? right, you're right, you're right. Who, who he went after. But he was on the committee. But fact-checking him in real time, not letting them get away with spewing their propaganda bullshit. And I am here for it. We need more Absolutely. of that real time fact checking because what happens is it gets both sided, right? They just, they cover the media often, mainstream media often covers these things as very matter of factly and it's both sides. Well, you know, he said this. Well, One said side that. says and the yeah. other. Yeah. No, or they let them go it, on and on on the Sunday show. That's not how any of this works. No, or they let them go on and on for two minutes on the Sunday shows, uninterrupted, spewing propaganda BS that's completely false. And then they move on to the next question and they don't challenge them. We can't have that. So no. I'm glad to see that some folks are pushing back on this because they need to it do really, it. It really means a lot. It does. It matters because that's what people see the headlines. They see the little clips and it influences their behavior. They don't cover this stuff or pay attention to it the way we do in such minuscule fashion so uh good for them i i'm, I'm here for it i want to see more of it and uh yes we need that lastly the border because this is a huge issue it has now moved up immigration is the number one issue in polling uh, why well again because republicans have been pushing this pushing this pushing this pushing this and democrats have been deficient in addressing it biden finally addressed it realize that this is a political liability they better get their asses in gear and they negotiated this Bipart a tough bipartisan immigration bill, border bill, and Trump killed it. Said, nope, we're not doing it. Mike Johnson goes to the White House. We've got Ukraine aid in the balance. We've got this the, the bipartisan border bill. We've got the sh potential shutdown, which they've averted for now because, you know, they just kicked the can down the road with the CR. All of this going on. And Biden finally went down to the border today. And Trump was at the border today. They were 325 mm -hmm. miles apart. One was in Eagle Pass. That's where Trump was. One was in Brownsville. That's where Biden was. And the way they handled it was just, it's its the stark contrast between them. It, really, it, it uh, really is. Just, let's show a clip. Just, uh, yeah, just, yeah. just a taste of them today. There was more to that. Um, that's Biden being a president. That's He's presidenting. That's what presidents do. As they, presidents are, are, are expected to do. Exactly. Yes. He's actually like making sure that the needs are met, making sure federal money when there's a disaster. Right now, there's a raging wildfire going on down in Texas that's actually threatening a nuclear facility down there, which is a whole other thing. It's called Pantex. I've been there. It's terrifying. I hope it doesn't get near Oh, it. my God. I had bad, no idea, by bad the way. Thing, bad things are there. Yeah. Bad things are made there and bad things are taken up part there yes. apparently I, i've been um, uh, there's wow. a thing at pantex when you go in to see these chambers where the um where the weapons are disassembled reassembled yeah and it's got this conical shape above your head and it's full of like 300 tons of gravel it's called a gravel gertie 
Oh my and god! And if the if something if there's an excursion in the room and the, and the nuke gets something breaks on it or there's a, a burst of radiation, yeah. the gurney drops two hundred tons of gravel and lead and boron onto everyone in that room and you die. Wow! It's what look up gravel gurney, people. It's crazy. That's I went crazy. there years and years ago when I worked for the defense department, and you it's one of those places you're like, can we be done now? I want to go eat some barbecue. Oh, yeah. Well. That's I had no idea that you'd actually ever been there. So yep. that's actually kind of cool. So you've been to a nuclear weapons assembly facility. I've been to Supermax. <laughs> so <laughs> two random places that no one should ever step foot in. <laughs> so there you go. The random facts of the day. Um, one of the other things that that happened on that trip was that Biden challenged Trump to work with him on it. Have the book work with me on this. Which yeah. I thought was very smart, very well, smart. It, it it really is. It really is one of those things where, um, it, where where Donald Trump, where the the lie of Trump and the and the showmanship and the showboating and the and the and the 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 politicization of Trump using this as an issue, mm -hmm. when in fact the people most grateful for Donald Trump right now are the cartels and the coyotes and the smugglers because he's the one. Who would who is preventing a massive new surging hire Correct. for staff for and patrol. support and equipment mm -hmm. for border patrol and yep. and DHS? That's why the border patrol union endorsed the bipartisan legislation. Correct. And so um, I know that we're making an effort here to point this out that it's actually Donald Trump and the Republicans who are supporting the cartels and allowing the fentanyl to come yep. through, allowing the yep. human trafficking to happen because. The, the Democrats and some mature Republicans in the Senate have a deal that they could have begun to in, implement. And there's, yep. I, I suspect that next week, which is the State of the Union, which is one week from tonight, there will be some executive orders announced, I think, coming out of the Biden White House to address this, because this has been an area of weakness for them. Rumors, rumors abound on that matter. Yes. yes, and what they need to do. They recognize it's yeah. a political problem and they need to do it. I don't like the idea of executive orders, but I understand it. So, and um, by the way, at this, to, point, to at this point, at this point, let's adopt the 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 sort of tech world model of move fast and break things. We don't have a lot of time <laughs> yeah. to solve a lot of problems. That's right. That's absolutely correct. Um, so next week, State of the Union, it is on Thursday. We will do a pre State of the Union show, our regular time at seven o'clock. It works out, but we're also going to come back and we're going to give our hot takes on the State of the Union after it's over. So I'm not going to bother with the response. Nobody cares. It's always a mess. No. So we're no, just as, I don't soon as, care. as soon as Biden is done, a couple minutes after that, um, we're going to come on the air and and give our hot takes. So make sure you come back and join us uh, post State of the Union next they Thursday. They keep talking about Trump giving the response. Oh, God. I think he's too cowardly. I, and even if he did, who cares? It's just a recycled speech right. of what the same shit he says all week bibbidi, long. Bibbidi, bibbidi, bing bong, boom, bam, whatever <laughs> right? his little dance Flip, he flop, does flop, is. whatever the hell he does. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we cannot. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, it's Super Tuesday next next week uh, already. I can't believe it's freaking March already. Um, wow. It's just flying by. The special show, The Countdown, will be on Tuesday at 9 p.m. I think that's you, Reed, and Simon Rosenberg, right, are going to be okay. on that. All I'll, right. Well, I'm letting you know, Rick. It's you, Reed, I, and I, Simon I, Rosenberg. I, all I know is I'm going to be in New York <laughs> on Wednesday night. I've got a show that Molly John Fast started doing Wednesday night in New York. We sold out City yeah, Winery. Nice. We're going to miss um, each other because I'm in New York on Monday and Tuesday to do uh, special well, coverage. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, at NBC. least let's have dinner like Tuesday night or something. Well, I'm doing coverage. We can't do it Tuesday night. I'm doing coverage for N, um, for NBC now. So that's oh, why I'm nice. in New York. And I'm leaving Wednesday morning. Maybe I can see you. We'll have breakfast or coffee or something we'll before I go. We'll try it. We'll, try it. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it travel, out. Because I just don't travel enough, folks. On <laughs> Saturday, I flew to Los Angeles, California. When I got there, had meetings, had meetings and a fundraiser uh, on Monday. And, and on Sunday, had a fundraiser Monday. Uh, and you flew, flew here, DC, at Monday night. <laughs> oh my God! Gave us gave it did a did a fundraising uh, dinner for Tuesday. vote ride or fundraising speech for vote riders Tuesday night. Yeah, Tuesday night. Yeah, left in the morning to go to Florida. Got to Atlanta. Plane broke down. Another oh. plane. Finally got home. I'm tired. I'm yes. crispy. You're tired. 
I've had enough fun for one day. One red eye a week is quite enough. Yeah, that's too much in my opinion. I'm not a fan of red eyes. But you do what you got to do when you're out here fighting for freedom and And, having fun. So on that note, Rick Wilson, go get some much needed rest. Folks, thank you for joining us. We will see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Like and share. Do the things. (laughs) 